Hello, in this video I'm going to share a few ideas for making escape rooms or breakout rooms with Genially and also especially how to avoid having a lot of uh, just straightforward multiple choice questions in there. Um, so I've been creating escape rooms for my classes for a few years now um, and I'm also working on a book about this but I've only come across Genially quite recently um, thanks to the MFL Tutorati group on Twitter. So Genially offers a lot of cool features and designs, um, but their templates seem to be a lot like this one. So here's a Halloween example and wrong answer, right answer. Let's click there. Okay, so it looks cool, but it is basically just this, uh, a multiple choice question. And if all your challenges in your game group are like this, even if they're connected with the story, I think it can feel more like a test and less like a game for the students. Um, but I think the whole point of having an escape room lesson is to be motivational and to encourage problem solving and teamwork. Um, so I'm going to walk you through some ideas um, of how to mix things up a little bit and show you how to make these presentations um, and I will share um, this presentation that I'm going to use and all the templates in there uh, in the notes below and I will also put a table of context there, a content there which will show you how to skip to the parts that interest you the most. Um, so I'm a languages teacher but all my examples can be used for any subject or just for fun activities as well. Um, I also have a Genially EDU subscription that you have to pay for. And I can recommend it because it can save you time and give you some extra features, but everything I will show you here can be done with a free account. And um, yeah, as long as you've got the time, more time than money, then you don't really need to upgrade. Um, so I will go in and out of preview mode here uh, to show you how to make the activities. So before you start, you, um, So here is an overview of um, the different subscriptions you can get. So I've got the EDU Pro one, um, but as I say, um, you can just go with a free one as well. So before you start, I just wanted to say you need to think about if you want to make your escape room um, a linear or non-linear escape room. So in a linear one, they each question leads on to some kind of lock or um, checkpoint where the students need to show that they've uh, solved the answers to then get to the next mission or question or task and so on until they get to the end and they have to do it in this order which makes sense if your story um, is very chronological like if you're actually looking at a, a history historical event for example um, the other ways of doing it is a non-linear setup where the students can choose the order of questions um, so they get all the questions at the beginning and they can choose which order to, to do them in and they can even uh, split them up. So if they're working in a team, then one person could work on question one at the same time as the second person works on sec uh, question two and so on, which obviously will speed up the whole thing. But I don't like so much because then they're not really team working necessarily. And also it means they're not all working on all the different tasks you've made. Okay, so um, here's a, a linear example. So this is just a template from, from Genially. Again, you've got right answer, wrong answer. So this is quite straightforward and so on. So you have to answer all the questions. And when you get to the end, you can then move on to the next challenge. So you haven't really got any choice. You have to complete this to get to the next bit. For a non-linear example, um, Again here, this is using a Genially template, so you get a map with different missions and you can choose to do the missions in any order. And once you've done them all, uh, each mission will give you a, a code number, which you then have to add up. And at the end, you can go into the briefcase and you need to type in the correct uh, numbers that you found out. And it will only open up and get you to the end if you've uh, added up all the answers correctly. So decide at the beginning which of these two you want to go with. 
Um, then first thing I want to talk about are some design principles and I've learned them all really by just looking at the uh, Genially templates and to see how they've how they've done it. So um, Here's a nice example Okay, so a few things here a you might have noticed that the things all appeared in a different order or uh, in a certain order so you had the title first the text then the two pictures and then you had the arrow flying in and hopefully you noticed that it really drew your eye to the to that um, picture or word coming in so it's really worth thinking about not having everything appear at the same time but with about one second uh, delay in between or one and a half second delay depending how much time they need to read it for example um, to really guide the eye to what you want them to notice so you first want them to completely concentrate on the title then the pictures and then if there's something that you think they might overlook for example a help button you could have that fly in last and point it out a bit more um, with more um, interesting kind of animation so they really notice that it's there um, I've also copied um, the design that uh, temp um, the genially templates seem to use a lot which is um, to have the title I'll go and show you how it works so the title flying in from the top so if you um, add your title and then click the little comment button there, the animation button then entrance so fade in um, in this case it's just fading in but you could have it flying in from the top so fading in that always looks quite nice especially if you don't have the rest of the text fading in from the bottom so they kind of meet in the middle and this line uh, under the title um, use the entrance the zoom entrance and it will make it kind of um, as if it's been drawn from the middle so it just showed us again so it uh, starts small and goes outwards um, and then these items um, for more stylish looking presentations I would say go with fade in and then at the bottom here you can choose um, with how much delay so I've done this 1.5 seconds after the other bits came flying in and then the cup was another 1.5 seconds later and so on if you have uh, something more kind of exciting or you want it to look more I don't know child friendly you could go with the more exciting version which is this so different different animations here so in this case um, I've used uh, the bounce in and for the buttons I kind of have the swirl and bounce back so they kind of draw the attention quite a lot to those buttons um, and then the start button came in a bit later and it was just flying in um, the background is one of the animated backgrounds that you can get in the uh, genie Lee by going to backgrounds and then show more and then at the top you have got a different category so if you go on animated it will show you all the ones that are a bit more kind of fun good then back to the pages um, a good trick is as well in whenever students get the answer wrong um, to have a slide like this I'll show what it looks like so it delays them a bit so in this case they have to wait three seconds before they can try again um, that avoids them just randomly clicking and just uh, getting through um, the, the puzzles or through the quiz by just guessing um, because this way if they have to wait three seconds every time they get it wrong it will really pick, put them off because that's quite boring waiting around so hopefully they spend more time actually thinking about the answers and getting it right um, so how I did this was um, just at the beginning I've got the three numbers which in this case um, disappear so you use the exit animation and after three seconds the first one falls down then the second one and so on and only after um, how long let's see after six seconds the try again button will fly in and they can only then click on it to get back to the beginning of the quiz uh, where they went wrong um, 
Good, then now let's get to some um, one more uh, design feature, namely if you use one of the backgrounds that have a lot of things on there and you have a title on it, you can see it's very hard to read um, and in in white and in black you can't really see it because the background has so many different colors. So a good trick to avoid that is you go to resources, add um, just a square uh, in gray or black, doesn't, doesn't matter too much. You put it in the background, so up here, background. Now that doesn't look so nice, but if I click on it and change the transparency and just make it a little bit more transparent, I can play around so that I can just see the text really well, but you don't really notice that gray square in the back anymore and it just looks like a nice title now which is easy to read both in black and white so that's one trick when you've got lots of background uh, noise going on so to speak so i said i wanted to avoid multiple choice questions but they are really the easiest way of checking if the students got the answers right so here are a few uh, ideas how to still use them but maybe with a little twist to make them a bit more interesting um, so my first one is um, a, a speed task so they click start and the answers start falling down and they're out of the screen so they can't see them anymore so they have to be quite quick at reading them and remembering and then decide uh, which of the answers is the right one and if they've missed it they can click there missed it then they go back to the previous slide and they can click start again to see it so they can do it several times if they need to um, so how I did this <coughs> was to create one one slide with the question, which just has the start button. And then in the next one, if I zoom out, you can see the words at the bottom. So they just have uh, an animation um, to fall in. Let's go back here. So they have entrance sl um, slide in. So that makes them slide across the whole screen. And I've put it to four seconds, so it's not quite so fast otherwise it's impossible to read it and um, also I delayed each one so they can have a bit more time to read the first one before the second one comes in um, so each one comes in at a slightly different time with uh, maybe one second or two second delay uh, try it out depending how long the answer is obviously okay another way of keeping students on their toes by making it fast is like this so here's a countdown timer and after three seconds, if they haven't got it, they um, they get the too slow um, picture and they can then click to try it again. So just like with the <coughs> other slide, I've just added the three numbers, which you can find in the uh, resources tab. Um, no, actually in the interactive elements tab down there, you add them in and you change them to disappear. So the exit after a few seconds um, delay and then you put that big picture on top of all of it. So this has uh, also an entrance delay. So after the three seconds, it will appear and cover up any of the other question. So they have to then click on this picture. So this has a link normally back to the first slide so they can try it again okay then the next one um here are the questions so in this case they fla flash so the students will need to again read them quite quickly quickly remember where they are uh, and then decide and click on it so how i did this was um if i change the background you can see it a bit better so let's have a purple background here. So really what it is, I've put boxes on that are the same color as the background. Uh, the second box is not really necessary here. So just put the box on and the box um, has um, a continuous um, animation, which in this case is fade in and out which might make it invisible and then appear again um, so if you have this in front of the word here we go um, we should be able to see the word and appear and disappear 
okay so to avoid them all um, flashing up at the same time I also made these boxes appear at different times so each one comes in with um, like three or five second delay of each other because otherwise you have them all visible and invisible at the same time so um, that's another way of making it a bit more fun or you can make use of this special background which you can find in the animated backgrounds and in this case um, I've given the answers which are just called title 2 here different colors which more or less match the background it, it's quite hard to get exactly the right color and unfortunately there's no um, eyedropper in Genially that you can copy the color exactly and um, so I had to play around with it a bit but I think it's pretty invisible so when it's blue on blue you can't really see the title and then I have to wait for it to come around again and I think this would work really well with a question like this which number is the highest um, where they actually need to know all the answers on the slide um, to be able to answer so they have to really wait for everything to appear or appear at least once and try to remember where which answer is um, yeah um, another one let's go to the next one so again here this is an animated background so this is a little idea to mix it up again is to just have black on black in on this radar slide so it's a bit harder to read in this case it's just a one word there title to um, just to yeah make it a bit more exciting okay so now we come to slides um, where you have to move things around so for any of them to work it is important that you go into the settings and uh, let me do it now so settings and say a drag ele elements that means that you can then move things around the screen once you do that though everything will be movable so they could even move the title around here which I don't necessarily want so I could just grab this and move it around um, which isn't good so if you use the draggable one you need to lock everything else so you go up there to the little lock symbol so they can't move this okay so here's an example of a draggable one so in this case they have to uh, get some ropes to get from one building into another so from this side to this side um, and they can just move the ropes and have to match up the words in this case so a cousin uh, cousine they move this um, then here the eltern are parents so they have to work out which of the ropes is the best one to connect the two sides and once they've done that all um, then that's not quite right um, then some of the numbers will be crossed out so uh, for example now the number four and number one are crossed out so the task is which numbers can you still see at the end so in this case if they do it correctly they would still see uh, number one number three and number two so that could be then part of a code that they have to put in into um, some kind of lock later on um, another nice idea I think is this one so the story is that they found some documents in a cafe and they also found some clues to go with them so I've got different pieces of paper here and it says remember if good is one what is friendly so they need to in this case use their knowledge of German and say oh good in German is good which is there so we need to put that next to number one so move it down a bit there uh, what is friendly so friendly is friendly so it's at the top there number 19 so the first number they would get for this puzzle is number 19 then if easy is four and so on so they need to find easy uh, put it next to number four and move it around for each of the questions so these are just nice uh, kind of match up tasks that are a bit more fun um, here's the same activity really just a different design so in this case uh, the task is find out where the battery needs to go in the machine but it's exactly the same task that the words have to be uh, matched up good then um, things to find in dark so this is the example from genially 
which is the flashlight activity. So they move the flashlight around to find the different statements, correct, incorrect, and then they click on it. And if they click on the correct one, it will take them to the next slide. Oops, in this case, uh, it, it was locked, so that shouldn't really happen. So with this slide, everything should be locked except for the flashlight picture. So th this is a, uh, a Genie template and there are two different versions on it there. There's one with a um, magnifying glass, which is a premium one. And this one is part of the um, the bright escape room, I think, or the Jean Lily escape room um, with the flashlight. But there's a really easy way of making this yourself. So really all it is is words that have the same color as the background. So it's a black background with black words. So if I go out and show you what it looks like, Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, so if we just change the background to yellow, uh, well, no, actually in this case they've put a picture there as well. Let's get rid of that. So background, now we can see all the words and this flashlight is just literally just a circle that goes behind the word to make them visible. So what they've done is changed the order of the layers. So you need to make sure that, um, your flashlight is the furthest back on your picture. So you go to back. So it's behind all the words so that when you go near them, you can then see on top of the white flashlight. Okay. Um, and then you add the interactive elements. Um, so you go to interactive element, draw a little box around the correct word or the incorrect word. And you can then um, add a link to this. So if they click here, they get to the slide that says no wrong. And um, on the correct one, they get to the next slide. One mistake I've made several times was that I thought I could save time and just have one giant wrong area, basically, that if they click anywhere, it's wrong. Uh, apart from that little one here. Um, which normally works so as long as the correct one is the top one. So you need to make sure here in the order, it's the top one, then it will react to that top area. But in this case, it doesn't really work because if they move their flashlight around and they let go of it, they can't pick it back up again because it will just pick up that um, invisible area. So unfortunately it doesn't work. So you really need to make lots of small areas, uh, but a uh, time saving tip is to do one, link it up to the wrong slide and then just copy and paste it. So um, control C and then control V and it just makes another one, which you can then put on all of them. And as long as they are smaller than the flashlight you're using, uh, they should always be able to grab the flashlight, even if they let go of it. And then um, once they found the word, they click on it they then get to the different slides. Okay. Um, there. Uh, there are a few variations here on that theme. Um, so for example, here is one with a rainbow. So it works with any color. It doesn't need to bl be black. So in this case, they have to find the hidden color words like red and brown and uh, pink is up there. Um, so the only thing that's important is that the front, uh, the, the word has the same color as the background and the cloud in this case is in a layer between the rainbow pictures or the rainbow stripes and the word. So the words need to be the top layer and the cloud, the next one, and then the rainbow. So it works. Um, one, uh, one one um, quick way of making sure that the picture is the same color as the word, or in this case, the stripe is the same color as the word, um, is if you, so I've chosen this red color up here, and you, you can't really save colors. So if you want to make sure that your word is exactly the same color, what you do is just um, copy and paste the color code there. So in this case, FF0004, um, copy, and then you go into the word, go into that color, and again, 
paste it in there to really make sure it's the it's the correct color so if i wanted to make it now now it's i've made it black um, maybe i didn't enter it properly there you go enter and now it should be exactly the same shade of red as the background okay so and then if the suits get this wrong they get into the rain which is a, a nice little animated background i have here's another variation of it um i mean you might have come across this as children that you have like a red piece of foil that you put on top of a picture like this so you can see um, what is hidden behind the red numbers in this case um, but again I've kind of cheated and really what you're doing is just putting the magnifying glass behind the word so it's really easily visible um, or if you've got a whole text like this you could also do it like this and have a strip of color that goes behind the text so they have to go around and find um, the words or the text here and maybe work out what the text is describing to get the next um, clue word okay there is um, a cool feature another cool um, animation you can choose is the hover and this is what it looks like so if i hover over it words appear so in this case the for the text the task could be find which of the words is wrong so domestic is correct this one is correct but zoo cats mm, doesn't really make so much sense so that's the wrong one if they click that they get to the next slide or here's a nice little one with a flower so if they go over it, the picture appears or if you've got individual words um, if you go over the body so lungs is obviously wrong so that would be the word to click uh, let's check so heart is correct brain is correct um, and they have to just look for the words here so the way i've done that is for the flower and the text really a bit like in the flashing activity it's just a white box in this case with a question mark on it as well that i've put on top of the word that it's meant to hide and then in the animation i've put hover mouse which means only if you put the mouse on it or your finger if you're on an ipad then it will hide it the same here with the flower so really what it is is two circles one at the back then the text then one at the front so that's the top layer uh, which gets hidden away once you go over it and with the words it's kind of the other way around so i've um, added all the words and then the animation here is hover in that case is fade in so they appear while in the other text is stuff that disappears um, to cover up things okay um, and you can also use this disappear um, animation with this so in this case they have to guess what the picture is um, so again it could be a whole text hidden behind there and they have to figure out what it describes or it could be um, the picture of i don't know a historical monument for example and they have to work out uh, where they could find it and so on um, and here's another one so a microscope they can't really move they don't really need to move the microscope they just need to do it with your finger and if they go over the word it gets a bit bigger so they kind of zoom in on the word to be able to read it um, so that again is a hover over animation here which is um, just called zoom and it makes it a bit bigger it is a bit difficult to tell what it will look like on different devices so if they are on a phone it might still be too small or if they're on an ipad it might still be too small so that's a bit difficult with this so i would maybe only use it if you know which device the students will be on so it's kind of fair for them that they really can all read the answers when they zoom in okay and then here a very classic uh, spy uh, puzzle so they've got um, a number substitution code so here are the numbers they also get the key to it so they can work out that 64 look in here is uh, o so they know the first word the first letter is o and you could just say um work out a whole the whole phrase and then click on the phrase in the text um, but i've made it a bit more complicated so they have to click for each letter so 
The first one is an O, so they need to find the first O in the text, um, which I think is in police. So when they click on there, um, it should then um, go darker and be underlined so they know they found the right word or the right letter in this case. Um, it took a long time to make because for each letter you have to make a new page, um, put in uh, a little um, invisible area there over the letter that they need to click and that invisible area will then take them to the next slide where that letter is kind of highlighted and the next letter they have to find has the invisible area on it. So that takes quite a long time. But if it's a shorter co code, then I think it's quite a nice way of doing it because they really know straight away if they found the right letter or not. Okay, then um, I want to show how to combine um, these escape rooms with another website called learningapps.org which is a really great and free website which is run by a charity and uh, it's really amazing for teachers I think and you can um, embed those activities so I'll show you three examples for that so here is one from the French one uh, so this is a little jigsaw puzzle where they have to match up the sentences with the right category so the first one uh, is something about a book so they need to click book and the first puzzle piece next one uh, again is about a book then we've got something about his family so I click on family and so on and in the end they will see a word uh, a picture up here and the great thing is in learning apps you can um, well you can make your own apps in this way or your own games with whatever text in whichever categories you want and also the end uh, feedback can be very specific and give them a clue so I can show you that um, this one then professions is this one and mm, I think this one so in this case it's telling them what the person looks like in French who they're looking for so I have to note it down um, to be able to solve the next puzzle but it could also say oh the code for the treasure chest is this and this number um, so that's a really cool way of integrating lots of other games so some other ones that are quite nice is this one so they can uh, as an escape room they probably want to play it against the computer and the great thing is the question can actually be part of a video so you can have a YouTube video you can choose a certain tiny little snippet of it they watch it and in that case in this case they have to work out which place this video was talking about so um, it was talking about Russia so they get to choose this point the computer also chooses it and so on so they got this right so now they get the next question they have to watch the next video and so on um, I think that's this one um, but you can also have a mix of some videos and some text so for some of the questions I couldn't find I couldn't find a video so instead I just pasted the text in that they have to match up um, or another learning app you can get is um, this match up one so you can and there are lots of different options of what you can match up so you can match up pictures and sound for example so it makes the sound um, with text to speech so it auto generates it if, which is great for language teachers it could be um, a little text it could be a video snippet it could be another picture so you could make match up two pictures uh, so lots of different things you can match up so they match them all up it's probably all wrong now uh, then they click the tick button at the bottom and it will then tell them if they get it all right again it will have that feedback box which might tell them the code is 555 or whatever okay so I definitely would go and check out uh, learning apps um, and once you've created a learning app scroll all the way to the bottom and it will give you a link and also an embed code so you can add it to your um, to your slide but it is important that it's the top layer so the phone the, f the frame of the phone had to be behind um, this game because otherwise you can't really kind of reach it so to speak so it needs to be at the top 
Here are a few more ideas of things that can be moved around. So in this case, you've got word strips. So the words go across the strips and they can move them around. So in this case, they need to find out which three hobbies are being described out of the choice at the top. Um, so they can work out that one of them is clavier. So they have the K, the L, A, V and so on. And it will then spell out clavier and the second one will spell out saxophone and wandern, which is walking. So they can work out clavier is a piano. So the first letter is E, the second one is A for uh, saxophone and uh, the last one is L for walking. So it gives them those three letters um, to put into a lock somewhere or obviously there could be numbers as well um, to be added up with other puzzles. So to make this is really easy. Um, you just add um, in the resources, you look for kind of a, an empty box. So you could use this one here um, and you can just make them longer. They go, then you add text and make sure that you um, write downwards in this case. So text and we want the first, um, first letters for the words so k then we go down a bit s and w you've got them there it really helps to, work, to write out the words on a piece of paper first so you know which letters need to be on each strip and um, then you select these words you select the frame at the same time as clicking shift and it has now selected both of them so you can group them at the top so they move around together Okay, and um, so for this activity, um, it's best if you have several words that have the same number of letters, um, but it can work with shorter words because you could just have a free space at the first um, for the first letter or the last letter. Um, and I normally have about seven words on there, not just three. That was just for the example. So, um, yeah, and then you can really test their subject knowledge by having it could be equations on there or it could be pictures of famous people and they need to figure out which names are hidden in there. So different ways of using this. Um, another uh, one is having kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. So here in this case, they have to work out the map of Germany and to then combine this with a, a code or a lock, they have got this graffiti on the wall. So they have to work out one is over there. So the puzzle piece that is going to be in that position will give them the first letter. The puzzle piece in this position will give them the second letter and the third one in, it, in, this, um, in this position. And then they have to choose out of all these graffitis at the bottom which one the right one is. And only if they click on the right combination, they can get to the next slide. So how I made this jigsaw puzzle is, well, it, it does take a while. Um, you need to have a picture um, somewhere it doesn't necessarily need to be ingenious but it's probably easiest to just have your picture in there um, come on so uh, let's just use one of the standard pictures here so let's say we want to make a, a jigsaw puzzle out of this so we cut this up um, first I would kind of draw the line so you know how big your pieces need to be um, so put some lines on it um, mm -hmm, where do we find lines uh, let's just use a box here let's use these boxes so let's say our puzzle pieces are roughly this size so, so I copy and paste them in a few times so now I've got my outline for the puzzle piece and now I'm um, taking tiny little screenshots. So if you're on a Windows computer, you click the win, win, Windows key, Shift and S, and will bring up the sh snipping tool. And now I go into the corner of that square, drag it down and just cut out that little bit. Now it's in my clipboard. So if I now press Control V, it will insert that piece. It's a little bit smaller, so you might need to um, make them bigger again so it really fits in the right place okay but now I've got that puzzle piece so I can now make lots of puzzle pieces and jumble them all up on the screen 
um, but to add a code obviously you, you would need to add a little number on each one um, or maybe a letter and then if they have the whole puzzle done correctly then it will spell out um, a code word or the clue to another puzzle. Um, an easier way of making it is with text. So this is just to have to unjumble the text. Um, so I've just drawn lots of white boxes, added a little bit of text and um, combined them as a group. In this case, I've told them start to make it be easier. So they know this is the first piece and also the first three pieces are the, the title. So they go at the top, so it helps them as well a little bit. And um, in this case, there's a hidden kind of message in there. Um, so they have to work out once they've done the puzzle, they have to take the first word from the blue location and from the red location and it will give them the words under table. So they know they have to look under the table. If I was in a classroom, I would actually make them look under the table and maybe stick something there. Um, but as it is lockdown time at the moment, we can't do that. So instead, I just have a picture of a, a cafe with tables and they have to click underneath the table, which has like an interactive area, which takes them to the next bit. OK, now I come to forms. So using forms in combination with Genially, um, that can make your lock making a lot easier because you basically just need one slide to make a lock. So I'll show you three different ways of using um, forms and you can embed them like this into, um, into Genially. And I'll show you in a minute how to do it. So in this case, what I want is that they have to put in the correct code number, which here is just 100. And then if they click next, now they get a link to a different Genially presentation which will have the next stage of the um, escape room. Or it could just have the last slide saying, well done, you won, go and claim your prize or whatever. Um, or again, it could just give them a code word. And if they tell the teacher the code word uh, or send in the screenshot of the code word, then they are the winner. Um, so this is a really good way of having this last kind of step. It doesn't look quite as nice as having the, the code in the briefcase. Uh, but it's much easier to do. And uh, if you don't know how to set up a Google form so that it uh, acts as a lock, then look at that YouTube video I've made. I've got the link in here as well in this presentation. Um, you can't do it with a Microsoft form at the moment because it doesn't allow you to specify a certain word um, or number. Um, before you get to the next part. So it only works with Google Forms, but the students don't need to have Google accounts to use it. So as long as you've got one, you don't need to work in a, in a Google school to use this. Um, another way of using uh, Forms is just as a checkpoint. And for this, you could use a Microsoft Form as well. So just after maybe half of your escape room have um, something like this, checkpoints, you've reached a checkpoint, fill in your name, and move on to the next slide. So they just literally just type their name, submit, and you as the creator of this form, when you then go into your Microsoft Forms website or your Google Form website, you can see all the answers and you can see that students, which students got to this checkpoint. Um, and then you could have another one at the very end. So instead of sending you a screenshot uh, of the winning slide, they can just put in their name and you can really easily see um, who made it and also at what time. So that's quite a good way of deciding who the winner is. Um, another way I've used Google Forms as well is uh, just for them to check their answers because if they have to do lots of different missions and then add all the numbers up and it doesn't work, that can be very frustrating because they don't know is their math wrong that they haven't added it up properly or is, um, did they get one of the questions wrong, but which one? So in this case, I've put a little I symbol in there and I've embedded the form into that pop-up window. So for all the different challenges they had, there is a bit here. So in this case, it was about timetables. So they had to solve one mission for biology, one mission for math and so on. Um, so 
um, if they got the code right, like one, let's say they got it wrong. So it will just say three digits and it's still wrong. Um, so they know they need to go back to that puzzle and work out that actually it was one, three, two, I thought, or maybe it's two, three. Oh, I don't know the answer now. Um, okay, here it was 80. So 80 was correct. So the red frame disappeared and they know that this one is right. So this way they can check all the answers, go back to correct the ones they got wrong and then come back and click on the correct keys. So they know if they add them all up, um, I don't know, it makes 530. So they click key five, key, key three and key zero. And each time one of the locks would pop open until they are at the end and they get out of the escape room. Okay, so I've added an extra slide here on how to embed a Google form or a Microsoft form um, into Genially. So you can have a look at that in the um, presentation. Okay, here are a few ideas for using pictures. And there are different ways of doing that. So here was the example I talked about earlier that they have to look under the table. So only if they click down there will they get to the next bit. So you could actually have kind of hidden hidden places. Um, you can use it for an introduction to the story. So in this case, I've taken a screenshot of my uh, Skype um, background. I've just blurred it out a bit on PowerPoint. And uh, when they get to the next bit, it will come up with the kind of speech bubbles, which gives them um, an introduction of what they have to do. And the background with the computer is just one of the Genie templates. Um, here is one where they have lots of different documents that they need for different, um, different puzzles or different missions. So this is kind of more similar to a real escape room where you're also in a room and you've got all this information around. You might have a bookshelf and you have to search through the bookshelf and so on. So I wanted to recreate that by having all these different documents and some of them are completely irrelevant like this photo they can click on it and it will come up in a little pop-up window and just look at it a bit closer so they don't really help them but some of the puzzles they will need so for example this uh, tick this fake ticket i made later on they get a question for what date it is valid um, so they get to a an opera house and it will say oh do you have a ticket to get in for what date is your ticket so they then need to go back to this box and rifle through it to find it. Um, so how you do that is I've created uh, this mix of pictures in, in PowerPoint, but you could create it straight in Genially as well. Just add all your pictures. Um, you add these invisible uh, interactive areas. And then when you click, um, Right. Let me add one and you see how it works. So you go to interactive elements, add invisible area. So let's say we want this to pop up over here. You click on a little hand and in this case, it's a tool tip. So that means that a little extra window will pop up and then you can either just have more clues in there or you can just copy and paste that same picture in here again that you've already pasted into here, just it uh, will come up a little bit bigger so it's easier to, for them to see. Um, or you could um, get the link to window. The difference is basically that windows are a bit bigger um, and tooltips are meant to be for smaller kind of text. Um, but I normally just use the tooltips. Um, then you can also hide things behind other things, which I think is quite a nice idea. Again, it makes it feel more like you're in a real physical room. So in this case, I've just added a background, uh, a wooden background and added some cut out pictures from Genially and you can move all of them around. And if you move them, oh, here, I found a question. So you can then click on that question mark and it will take you to your next mission or puzzle or whatever. And there's another one hidden there. So it's quite nice for them to rummage through the things and and uh, find extra clues. Um, also, obviously, you can use your pictures to drive the story forwards because escape rooms, I think the story is really important. So in this case, it's all about, I don't know, uh, being lost in the woods, maybe. 
and at the moment having bitmoji seems to be super popular because of lockdown i guess that people still want their students to remember what they look like um, so you can get the bitmoji add-on for your browser and make a little avatar of yourself that you can then put into your scene to make it look a bit like a comic book i guess and uh, to add a personal touch to it or obviously it doesn't need to look like you it could but just be your uh, your hero of your story so there are lots of ways of um, changing the clothes and the, the hair and so on okay so in this case they need to walk down the path so when they click there ooh, they come to the to the um, magical tree that speaks to them hello can you solve a riddle so it, it gives it a nice kind of atmosphere and they really feel like they're in a wood um, just by having these big background pictures that are connected to each other and the words are flying in from the direction of the person which kind of makes it look a bit more like it's kind of like a speech bubble coming from there um, and here i've got a fake voicemail me message it's not so easy to uh to read uh, but there are lots of websites that can fake things for you it's quite scary actually so there are if you just type into google and find fake voicemail message fake text message fake uh, plane tickets fake receipts uh, there are lots of websites where you can then type in your own items for example in a let's say you want a fake receipt like i used in the um in the box of of documents here um so i could really personalize this to my story and i've changed the items to be in french um, you can even change the the date and the time of when you went shopping um, and then download it as a picture and add it to your story or a fake plane ticket is here so they have to find out different information from that and so on so it just makes it much more realistic and um, when you're in a classroom you could also use that to um, put around your classroom so you could just have this fake plane ticket lying around or a fl f fake receipt or a fake newspaper article which gives them the clue oh no there's a murder being discovered or whatever uh, that makes them then excited to want to solve the puzzle and uh, really immerses them in the story hopefully then the last part is um, about google tour creator which i think is a really great tool um so for that you need to go into google to google vr um tour creator um there's a link in this presentation as well um for languages teachers is great because you can actually take the students to the the place where the language is spoken but it could be also great for history teachers so for example here's about the berlin wall so you can have pictures in your little tour of what the berlin wall used to look like and what it's like now it could be um good for biology as well because you can go in the middle of the jungle or the bottom of the ocean and look around there and find different things so um, i think quite a lot of subjects could really use this um, so on google tour creator you basically just choose points on a map on a google map and it will take google street view images from that point if it's a country that allows allows it and you just add them to your presentation so in this case i've got six scenes so i can go to the next scene and the students can look all the way around it's 360 degree scenes if they have vr goggles they can even look at it in vr but not quite that high tech for this one um, and again it can show them um, what it used to look like and can give them a little text so you can add these points of interest uh, to draw their eyes to it or to ask them a question like how many how many bicycles can you see that's your next code number for example and it really forces them to look all around to really well in this case would be quite a high number of bicycles um, to make them really look at their surrounding or uh, in this case i've hidden the code number in a text so they they read a little information and then at the bottom it says code number seven so in this case they could just skip the text and not even bother reading it um, but I've made this for students who are hopefully interested in a topic so they would still read it but you could hide um, hide it somewhere 
Um, and often I've combined this with a Google form as well. So um, on the Google form, it will then ask them how many bicycles were in scene one, how, uh, what color, I don't know, what color was the shirt in scene three or what did it say on the bus in scene four or whatever. And they really have to note down the answers, then go to that Google form. And only if they fill all the answers incorrectly, uh, it will give them then the code number or the link to the next uh, scene and so on. So um, something that I think is missing in Genially, which would make puzzles uh, easier to make is if you could create links to individual slides. So if there's no way of getting to that last slide, for example, except if you get a di direct link to it. But at the moment, that's not possible. So what you need to do is actually create two different Genially, um, two different Genially um, presentations and um, have the link to the second one embedded in in the first one um, so that's one way of of getting them from one place to another okay um, I will put this presentation in the notes um, but uh, if you've got any questions you can also ask me on Twitter at uh, at J U S C H M O and I'm happy to help <laughs>